Larger than life political figures have always been a very important part of Tamil Nadu politics. So much so that political parties have felt the need to invoke such political icons uh, and time and again in an attempt to connect with the voters. Now, the upcoming assembly elections are no different. BJP is leaving no stone unturned to make inroads into the state of Tamil Nadu and have been doing, this, uh, doing the same thing. Now, after MTR and Kamraj, BJP has now used yet another prominent figure uh, from another party in their Tamil Nadu poll campaign. And this time, very surprisingly, it's the image of former Congress Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. And this has been used by the BJP in an official video released on the occasion of Women's Day. Now, using the song uh, Singa Penne, which refers to a woman as a lioness, BJP called Indira Gandhi a brave heart. Now, earlier the party had drawn flack from Congress for the use of former Chief Minister and Congress leader K. Kamraj's cutout at the venue of uh, Prime Minister Modi's rally in Coimbatore. The Congress had termed it an attempt to appropriate the Congress leader's legacy. Now, the BJP's Tamil Nadu unit had also faced backlash from the AIA DMK for using MGR's image in a teaser video for the Vetri Vail Yatra. But the larger question here is, does icon politics actually work and does it connect with the voters? And secondly, can anyone or any party alone claim the legacy of legendary leaders? Those are some of the important questions that we're going to be asking. Let me welcome uh, my guests who are joining in tonight. Kovai Satyan, spokesperson of the AI DMK. We also have Manu Sundaram, spokesperson of the DMK. Vivek Reddy, spokesperson of the BJP. Mohan Kumar Mangalam, spokesperson of the Congress. And we also have Madhavan Narayanan, senior journalist. Let me, in fact, start off with uh, going across uh, uh, to Vivek Reddy at this point in time because uh, the, the first, you know, the question about this particular video and using Indira Gandhi's image, when we've seen a BJP use wasting no opportunity uh, to sort of uh, slam the emergency, uh, now talking, uh, bringing up this image in this kind of a video and the timing of it, uh, what, what is the reaction? Well, I think we'll have to examine the video as to the context in which um, Indira Gandhi's image was brought in the video. Mm. And um, based on that, we will have to make an assessment. But the issue is this, that uh, Indira Gandhi has been known for the most um, uh, dangerous uh, trend emerging in Indian democracy, most perhaps the most disastrous uh, event in Indian democracy. That blot cannot be taken away. And that blot will, the 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 past will, the ghosts of the past will forever ring in India's future whenever Indira Gandhi's name is brought about. Therefore, going to iconic politics, which is the question that you raised, the, the icon politics, I think there have been lots of icons in India. There have been several prime ministers. Few of them emerge as icons. And the legacy that they leave behind, the history that they make, will always be something that will be examined by the future and by the present generations. Giving this, given that this is there, Indira Gandhi has had a lot of past, bad past, and perhaps a little bit of good past. And going by a analysis of all this, can one assess what sort of a character was India, Indira Gandhi in India's uh, historic uh, politics, in India's, in, in the history of Indian politics. But I will not go well into a debate on this issue. The point is, that each political party has its own icons. BJP today has its uh, Narendra Modi as an icon. He has really created history in uh, Indian politics. He has shown how development can be a basis for India's future. He has also shown how the walls of caste, the walls of religion, the walls of various other differences can be broken and India can be made to uh, aspire for success and that is the sort of politics brought no, in by... Fair, fair enough, Vivek Reddy. I, I take your point about, you know, the, the issue of icons uh, on a whole. But here, I, I want to come back to this particular video. And, uh, you know, we can show it to you if you like. Essentially, it's a women, video uh, that was released on Women's Day by the Tamil Nadu BJP. It had a whole host of leaders and um, uh, women leaders. And one among them was Indira Gandhi. Now, the reason I'm asking you this once again is because uh, the, the BJP has, in the past, made a uh, huge political capital out of attacking the Gandhi family, the ills of India that have been attributed to them. And now to see something like this is, 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 is you know, quite surprising. So that is the reason I'm trying to understand what is it that 
made this decision and this kind of a video to include Indira Gandhi here? Well, I think we'll have to, the BJP will certainly check on why this video came up. Perhaps uh, the composers of this video will be asked as to why uh, Indira Gandhi's name is there. Though Indira Gandhi has uh, made strident efforts as a woman to emerge in politics, but still the original question that the BJP is always asking is, that, but for the fact that Indira Gandhi was the child of Nehru, was the daughter of Nehru, I don't think she would have emerged as an um, icon in Indian politics or she would even have emerged as a prime minister of India. Okay. But for the fact that she was the dynastic daughter inheriting the legacy of Nehru, she would not have been a Congress president directly without uh, aspiring for other posts. I mean, everybody in India's politics today will not get such, will not be fortunate enough. At least the panelists here and various other politicians here, we have not been fortunate enough to suddenly be plumped into these, uh, suddenly being uh, put into these posts by the hands of destiny. I think this is where we find that Indian politics needs to be more refined. You see the uh, but, example but, of Vivek Reddy, you know, if I can just point out the irony worker. here, and, and I'm going to go across after this comment uh, to my other panelists as well, but just very quickly to point, point out the irony, you are, you know, lashing out once again at dynasty politics and, and the Gandhis. And uh, on the other hand, there is this video uh, which has Indira Gandhi in it, uh, lauding her, in fact, as, as you know, a, a lioness, uh, so to speak. But uh, uh, let me go across uh, to uh, Kovai Satin here. Your reaction, the AIA DMK's reaction uh, to this particular video, and also we've seen in the past when the BJP has invoked, you know, other leaders as well, uh, there has been, uh, you know, a disgruntlement amongst the, among the party. No, the reaction is pretty much simple. On a Women's Day, if the party comes out with pictures of everybody, irrespective of uh, portraying their background, which means that they are paying tribute for their achievement. Hmm. So let's take the good, look at the positive side, let's not look everything through the spectrum of politics. Okay. They have showcased. They have showcased women who have uh, uh, achieved in their respective arena against all odds, and particularly in politics where it is a male-dominated bastion, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, say that no Indira Gandhi didn't fight against odd all. She had a cakewalk. She indeed did her achievement uh, to be at the helm of affairs of the nation. So giving credit to the same on a Women's Day can be looked at through a sp positive spectrum rather than to be viewed in a political uh, spectrum. Okay. I would uh, say there is nothing wrong hmm. in giving credit, uh, giving credit to those achievers in their respective streams. Fair enough, uh, but that's not the same, uh, you know, uh, the same reactions that the AIDMK had uh, with respect to, you know, some of the other issues. But we'll come to that in just a bit. I want to go ac across no, to Mo Mohan uh, Kumar Manglam. I, I will come back on that point in, in just a bit, uh, you know, uh, but uh, Mr. Satyan, but I want to go first across to Mohan Kumar Manglam here uh, and your reaction uh, to this. Of course, we do know that this is not the first time that uh, BJP has invoked, uh, you know, other leaders of, across party lines, uh, but your reaction to this. This isn't a surprise by any means. I mean, they have, they're expert at usurping icons when they need to. They did that with Sadar Patel and then they went ahead and changed this uh, stadium named after him recently to Mr. Modi's name. They do it with uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in Bengal and now they're doing it with uh, the late Prime Minister Ms. Indira Gandhi in Tamil Nadu. And of course, they also used uh, the late uh, Chief Minister Mr. Kamaraj's cutout in one of their rallies. This comes from the fact that they don't really have any icons of their own and they don't have any involvement in the freedom struggle. And so they try and pick people from different eras to try and help support their cause and say that we represent their ideology. So icons are really symbols, right? And what do those symbols stand for? If those, if the ideology that they stood for carries through generations, then you could actually bring those icons to the fore and say that those promises that were made by those icons at that time still hold true. So if you look at you know today's current scenario, who are the icons of liberalism and pluralism, pluralism but versus on the other side, uh, let's say conservatism and communalism, and you'll have your answers. You can't use people in the past. And I mean, I, I think Dr. Reddy is being very disingenuous when he says that uh, the late Mrs. Indira Gandhi had an easy ride and all she did in her life, the only thing you can attribute to her legacy is emergency. I mean, she's known as someone who picked up the downtrodden. There was Garibi Adao, there was Green Revolution. There were all the uh, things that she did for the environment, the tribals. I think he needs to read up a little bit on history if he wants to be educated on what the late Mrs. Indira Gandhi had accomplished in her time frame, in her period in, in prime ministership. So I want to go back to what I was saying before. 
icons really represent our symbols and those symbols represent certain ideas certain thoughts if those ideas and thoughts are carried forward through generations then those icons still live on okay all right uh, manu sundaram your reaction uh, to uh, this this specific uh, particular video and this this issue i'm sorry i couldn't hear you you broke up well uh, no, not not so much this particular video but uh, let me offer a fairly straightforward and simple explanation uh, in your sister channel that is time is now they carried a, a sea water survey uh, the results must be with most of you if not all the survey said that 51% of tamils or tamil nadu residents rejected mr modi which was the highest disapproval rating amongst all states so what do you do when your national icon so to speak is rejected by a complete state you would tend to normally um, and naturally appropriate other leaders when you have none in your own uh, kitty so this is not the first time they have done this if you i think my my co panelist rangarajan said that they have done this with uh, sardar patel and kamraj and let's not forget mahatma gandhi on one hand they 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 you know parade around uh, with the statues of goats and on, on the other hand that of mahatma gandhi it's completely disingenuous as he said uh, see leaders are manifestation of the ideology of their ideology their organization's ideology their political ideology they are but symbols of the movements that they lead the fact that bjp has to uh, you know dig into congress's kitty and bring out uh, kamaraj bring out uh, mrs indira gandhi uh, shows two things one they probably thought they can get away because mr kamaraj and mrs gandhi are not here to uh, you know distance themselves from this you know terrible travesty and secondly it shows to me a larger um, confusion about what electoral strategy that they need to undertake in tamil All right. I, I think. Now, fusion. It shows a lack of clear ideological thinking. You know, in the DMK camp, and, and along with my friend who's from the Congress, we are very clear in what we need to do. We hmm. want to to make sure that this land of self-respect, this land of social justice, this land of state autonomy remains that way hmm. and does not become subservient to its masters, to the masters in Delhi and Nagpur. So that's our plan. That's our platform. That's our plan. But of of course, if you if you are a little confused and worried about your own uh, ideology or what. you need to do it's only but natural for them to go and appropriate leaders from other political parties look they may claim they may claim that you know kamraj and the mrs gandhi are their leaders as well or maybe they will not but it's a bit disingenuous to do this just weeks uh, or months before the election right. if they want to celebrate these leaders let them celebrate them throughout throughout the year throughout the next 5 years let mr modi and mr shah declare that to be so but right. just doing it at the eve of election does not seem quite right yes avik idea i saw your hand up i will come back to you let me just go across to madhavan narayanan here uh, to get a slightly broader perspective uh, madhavan first off uh, you know when you saw this video were you surprised at all and the larger issue here uh, of uh, you know icon politics that we are talking about and the fact that at this point in time uh, bjp does have no large icon to sort of fall back on as far as the state of tamil nadu is concerned right now good questions amni but uh, i have a lot to say on this le- uh, issue let me say yes my eyebrow did uh, grow up in amusement but i was not surprised because i have always believed that the bjp believes in the politics of imagery over than the politics of ideology and logic hmm. except in pockets where it suits them they know that the average uh, viewer of the video who is going to be the voter in tamil nadu is not going to be um uh, logically necessarily discussing these things although i do agree with manu that uh, tamil nadu is no longer uh, you know tamil nadu is not your semi literate state it is no longer in my opinion tamil nadu is no longer part of the third world uh, engineering colleges and it's it's gone to an intellectual level where debates are free uh, and uh, people will be uh, talking about it having said that let me say appropriation is not new to indian politics Dr Ambedkar was appoint, uh, appropriated by Congress although he was with the Republican Party of India and uh, as a dalit icon later he was uh, appropriated into uh, Congress forward block is the party that Netaji Subhash Bose was associated with which was a part of a communist less, uh, left front in Bengal but today you find BJP appropriating Netaji Bose as a nationalist leader although he had a very strong leftist streak in his personality Yes. Um third uh Periyar uh dra- founded the Dravida Karagam in Tamil Nadu 
and the DMK was founded by breaking off with uh, Periyar when he was alive. But today, the Dravida uh, Munetra Karagam will swear by Periyar as an ideologue, although I think Manu was honest enough to, and very articulate enough to um, uh, identify the ideology with the personality. This is one more instance. And the fourth is Indira Gandhi fought the 1960s, broke off with the old Congress led by uh, Kong Kamaraj, uh, and the Congress split happened in circa 1969, but later Kamaraj started, uh, you know, I think just before his death, on his deathbed, Indira Gandhi went and met Kamaraj, and later Congress uh, under Indira started uh, uh, appropriating Kamaraj. Now, the key question to ask here is two things. First, let me say in, in a lighter vein, maybe ICON stands for I with a space with after the uh, I, so there is ICON. You know, there's a saying by, I think, George Bernard Shaw who said that a politician will do anything to succeed, he'll even tell the truth. Maybe they are admitting to the fact that Indira Gandhi not just imposed the emergency, but she also won the uh, Bangladesh war, and she probably commanded the biggest uh, war success that uh, uh, against Pakistan than uh, the BJP uh, in the foreseeable future will. Mm. So that is a recognition that they have to acknowledge, and I also do not believe the high command or the senior leaders of BJP will agree with Vivek Reddy. A lot of them acknowledge Indira Gandhi as a leader, yes. although they criticize the emergency. Now, let's wait for the amusing part. The amusing part is that here is P.T. Usha, here is Kalpana Chavla, here is, hey, Jai Lalita, then Indira Gandhi, and then who do I see in the same video? Khushbu and Vanati Srinivasan of the BJP. Come on! It is not even apples and oranges. Mm. You're comparing mountains with molehills in the same video. So my uh, contention is that the BJP is using the politics of appropriation and imagery in order to project uh, its very tiny local leaders as somebody bigger than they are by a process of association. Process of association by visual gimmicks is a very ordinary trick in politics which intellectuals are very poor at. You know, mm. they don't understand that uh, the average voter lives in the world of images. The average voter does not, cannot afford the luxury of yes. systematic contradictions and logic. Yes. Having said that, I must say, this is where the BJP may fail, which is that, as I said at the beginning, Tamil Nadu is no longer your uh, cowbell state. The people are highly educated. The people have uh, gone through levels of political awareness uh, that goes back to the Justice Party uh, 80 years ago, roughly. So they will be able to analyze it. But you know a wind is blowing through this country. Yes. This, As we know, this is one day after the International Women's Day. Yes. There is a silent vote bank called the Women's Vote Bank, right. on which I've written about when I was working for the Hindustan Times. So a lot of people look at the gender factor, and there may be marginal fence-sitting voters right. who may not be identifying with cars or the goodies, Yes. But they emotively identify with Kalpana Chavla and Indira Gandhi. And then they see Khushbu, who was until not so long ago in the Congress party, may I remind. And then look at Vanati Srinivasan. They haven't even heard of her. And they may say, Acha, there is some Talevi by this name. Hmm. So uh, that's how it works. This right. is the ordinariness of Indian politics. Right. But you know, there's a lot of money to be made in the ordinary if you're in business. And there's a lot of votes to be garnered in the ordinary if you're in... You know, people like you and me, thinking people are... Uh, rejected minority in this republic now. Right. So, Mr. Uh, Maran, I, I completely fun. take your point there <laughs> and I want to come back to you, you know, for the larger issue that you've also spoken about. But two points that you made that I want to highlight and then go back to Vivek Reddy as well. One is uh, you spoke about the politics of imagery versus the politics of ideology and how the BJP is very clearly going for the former instead of the latter. Uh, so irrespective of party lines, you know, uh, putting out the, polit the politics of imagery, giving more importance to that. And the other, the differentiation that you drew between uh, uh, the, the leader Indra Gandhi and how you know we haven't you're right we haven't really heard the BJP you know anyone to, to uh, come out and criticize her but uh, more criticize the emergency uh, leaving no opportunity in fact uh, to criticize the emergency as such but Vivek Reddy you know the point that uh, was being just being made in terms of the fact that in Tamil Nadu BJP does not have any large uh, political icon uh, so this is perhaps the only way uh, to sort of try and reach out to voters and to make those inroads, but is this the best strategy and do you believe uh, that it can work? Well, I think we are putting a very 
um, important alternative to the um, uh, DMK in Tamil Nadu. Our uh, politics is today that BJP is a very viable alternative to the politics of Tamil Nadu. Unfortunately, many people feel, well, does the BJP have that gut so? Does, does it have that power? And I'd like to remind Mr. Madhavan that cow belt as a distinction, cow belt uh, states as a distinction, is not something to wonder at because look at uh, Karnataka, look at South India, look at how BJP is expanding its imprint in various parts of other South Indian states. Well, this is a reality that you will have to face and confront. You cannot wish away the BJP and say that, well, BJP is, a, uh, is, a, is not a player there. Today, the politics of aspiration amongst the people and the sort of politics that has been shown by the BJP leadership at the center, I think people want that sort of politics, whether it be Tamil Nadu, the cow belt states, or other states in South India. And this is, there is a significant and marked decrease and complete dwarfing of the Congress as so far as that issue is concerned. So imagery may be a strategy that mm. one may use. You may use imagery as a strategy. You may use mass campaigning as a strategy. You may use Modi's, Mr. Modi's power to attract people as a strategy. Well, these are various strategies that you use. But how, how strong are you at the ground level is the key in politics. People used to say, you know, it reminds me when, these, when some of the DMK panelists and uh, Mr. Mohan Kumar among them talk, it reminds me as to how they try to put the BJP aside in Karnataka as far back as even five years and one decade, saying that BJP did not have presence in Karnataka. And BJP just trumped past the dividing line of the midway mark and came to power. Well, the naysayers have an answer. Kindly look at Karnataka. And you should be really afraid of where you are with respect to Tamil Nadu politics. We are here to show that the alternative is catching fire amongst the people. And we are here to show that the sort of alternative you are giving is no good alternative at all. But uh, then, Avivek uh, Reddy, you're contradicting yourself here. You're contradicting yourself here because if you're saying that on ground people realize and understand uh, what the BJP really stands for, then you wouldn't need to invoke politicians, uh, you know, or, or icons, uh, 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 other but icons to sort of was. make that imagery that uh, come across or to use that as a, as a uh, way to connect yes, to voters. I told you, I told you that this was one amongst the several political strategies in okay. order to gain ascendancy in politics. But one thing I'd like to ask Mr. Kumar Mangalam, because he said that you're forgetting that these icons stand for great things. They stand for Garibi et al. Well, what sort of icons are they? Are they the icons of dynasty? Because that also cannot be wished away. Or are they icons icons of how democracy could be set at naught, could hmm. be nullified? Hmm. Are they icons of these things also? And one more thing, Garibi et al. is what Mr. Kumar Manglam said. Well, India today, even during UPA's regime, at the end of UPA's regime, had 25 crores of poor which was almost a one-fifth, a little less than one-fifth of India's total population. That is the poorest of poor, who are not only below poverty line, but below the below poverty line. And what sort of Garibi Atha are you talking about if you can't, if due to your politics of 70 years, you have not taken India out of poverty? This is, these are issues as to why Congress is getting dwarfed and singled out uh, and is marginalized today. You must realize that. All right. And my DMK friend, I'd like to ask my DMK friend also. You were talking about Mr. Modi's 51% sea voter. You know how voter surveys are. I mean, you cannot say that voter surveys are the basis of your assessment. You are totally wrong. You can't be, you can't be judging the voter surveys and saying where the swing is happening, where the trends are. You got to have your own methods of assessing where you stand, how robust you are, how fast, how, how quickly you are catching pace in the landscape of Tamil Nadu politics. Well, if you are, you, if you are in a different world, in an illusion as regards this, well, so be it. All right, uh, Mr. Narayanan, let me come to you very quickly for a quick reaction, and then I want to. I have a question for Mr. Kumar Mangala. Yeah, all I want to say is this: the BJP. Uh, let me use the corporate analogy. Companies can grow either by the greenfield strategy, or they go for mergers, acquisitions, and alliances. And in the south, BJP is largely uh, relying on M and A and alliances. And you know. In Karnataka, it has got uh, Ed Yurappa, who's tainted by corruption scandals. In Tamil Nadu, it's been flirting uh, horror of horrors with Sashikala, who's actually spent four years on a conviction in a corruption charge. And in the uh, rest of the country, they've been uh, promising clean governance. So let me say this is good strategy. 
there is good strategy that in politics you do not hesitate to cause, contradict yourself because people like you and me don't really matter in the voting scale. But uh, uh, this may be good strategy. It could be very shrewd, very Machiavellian, but uh, let's not confuse it with clean governance, okay? Because it means being politics being the art of the possible. In the South, their possibilities exist with EPS and OPS and Yeddies and other some Reddies maybe somewhere tomorrow. But this is how it works for BJP. We shall see it when we believe it, when BJP emerges as a full-fledged greenfield saffron party in the South. All right. Uh, Mr. Kumar Manglam, you know, you, you <laughs> pointed out uh, and you were uh, lashing out at the BJP for using, uh, you know, the image of uh, Indira Gandhi and even for other leaders uh, as well. But my question to you is Congress has always themselves given so much importance uh, to the Nehru Gandhi family. So why should it be a problem rather than any other leader? So whether it's BJP or any other party who's invoking, uh, you know, any, any other leader or a Congress leader, for example, uh, why should that even be a problem when your party has always given so much importance to Nehru Gandhi family. As I said before, the reason we invoke those leaders, the reason we invoke those icons is because we continue to follow the path that they trailblaze for us. We continue to believe that liberalism and pluralism and secularism is important for this country. I mean, Mr. Reddy is talking about providing an alternative in Tamil Nadu. May I come in, the please? only campaign really that uh, they've run in Tamil Nadu BJP is the Vail Yatra, which is trying to protect God. I mean, is this the alternative politics they're trying to offer Tamil Nadu, which is again going down the path of religion? What exactly is this politics of development they've been harping about for 10 years? I fail to understand. I don't see our economy progressing at the rate that the great Prime Minister promised that it would. And I don't see any talk of development. I only Can see I the Vail Yatra. This is what the BJP is offering to Tamil Nadu. Is. You have believers in God and non-believers in God and come join the believers. So this is the politics that's being op on offer right now. And I'm happy to tell Dr. Eddie, oh, sorry, Mr. Reddy, that uh, it won't be one generation. It might take multiple generations for them to make this one of their bastions, so to speak. Hmm. All right. Uh, Vivek Eddie, I saw your ha hand up. I, I, I will I will come back to you. But uh, can I go across to Kovai Satyan here? Uh, you know, because I have a question specifically because we've seen in, in the recent past that the AIADMK, in fact, got very upset when at uh, Mr. Mo uh, uh, the Prime Minister's rally in Coimbatore, we, there were cutouts of uh, MGR as well as of Kamraj. Uh, you know, so the question really here is that uh, the BJP is an ally. So why should it even be a problem? Why should there be disgruntlement am uh, among the party? I never know who showed their disgruntlement out in open, like how you are stating right now. But I have a couple of answers to my fellow friends. Yes. Look at this debate. They still want to view this through the spectrum of politics. Let me ask them both. Mr. Kumar Mangalam talked about uh, Vail Yatra. Let him remind uh, me that it is their ally, DMK leader, MK Stalin, who showcased himself, portrays himself as an atheist, carried that Vail Yatra and said that, no, I'm not an atheist. So what is that kind of ideology you are talking about? Let me tell you, this video released on a Women's Day. Any women who has got into the stereotype mundane activities, look up at them and see, see, they have come out and achieved. That's how they look at it, rather than thinking what is that ideology they stood behind. I'm, I'm seriously looking at this uh, with amusement. Manu Sundaram said, no, they don't have any other tall figure. If I were to be Manu Sundaram, I could have given four or five names from my party who have stood uh, tallest, who have beaten all these odds against, and would have showcased them, yes, my party also has got icons of this stature. You don't have any. Why do you end up blaming others? And you talk about politicizing, saying that the boss sit at Nagpur, the boss sit at elsewhere. This narrative was stale and rotten in Tamil Nadu. Don't try to set this narrative in each and every debate, irrespective of the title. My question is pretty much simple. Women look at this and they want to draw inspiration is the motto and idea behind these videos. That's what the BJP IT wing of Tamil Nadu told me. There is nothing <laughs> called driving the ideology. Or there is nothing called anything stereotype behind this whatsoever it is. So that's why they have taken chosen women from different spectrums or whatsoever it is. Now Mr. Narayan journalist talks about uh, why, why is Kushbu there, why is somebody else there. You look at it, this a journey of 1000 miles starts with the first step. A woman has to break their stereotype to make a mark is a message. And if you can't look at positive things and you want to look at everything through the spectrum of politics and you want to make or score your brownie points out of this, this is where you will end up. People will question you back. It's been seven decades. You don't have anybody else other than Indira Gandhi in your party to showcase. It's been seven decades. Don't DMK has got any icon uh, women uh, uh, as their party uh, to talk about? 
then uh, look at your back then you can point fingers at the saying that this is what it is they are stealing what are you talking about so hold on a second what are you talking about uh, then we this didn't make what, this video uh, it's about it's about what bjp is showcasing right now yeah, we have many my icons question to showcase. Is, we are questioning my question why is, they are using our icons i don't understand no, what my, you're saying Kumar, Sorry, let, point, let me please point to you. Well, it is not one. Mr. There are many spots put up here. Because we've all been waiting to hear what he had to say. Um, and and you know, uh, look, Mr. Satyan, I think you're the only person five weeks from election who does not view anything with a spectrum of politics. <laughs> I think that that that's a ref, that's a refreshing change. I, I'm not being sarcastic. I think that's good though because there's been an overload of politics. But uh, you know, just to you know, on on that lighter vein, I think um, uh, two speakers before me, Mr. Narayanan, if I've got his name right, talked about mergers and acquisitions, sir. Uh, this is not one of merger and acquisition. It's that of a hostile takeover by the BJP of the ADMK and its factions. Nevertheless, let me come back to the topic. You know, uh, we have made very specific. Uh, criticisms against the bjp with regard to how they have treated women and as well as their ally admk let me just list out three the center for monitoring indian economy says that women or female labor force participation is at one of its all time lows during the covid pandemic there has been no scheme either from the center or the state governments in this regard in in recent past we've had women ips officers complain of sexual harassment and government in tamil nadu trying to hush that up again no word about that this central government is on affidavit before the supreme court and has admitted to the houses of parliament that marital rape should be exempted as a criminal offence there is no response about that so therefore using imagery is not the problem sir but when you cannot back it up with some substantive policy making or something that will help change women lives in large then that's why people do not trust you that's why the credibility of your party is low in tamil nadu not for any other reason i do not you know i hope i wish you all the very best in the coming elections and future but all i would say and i would join my colleague from the congress here is please show us your progress card in development what you've done for women over the last Five years or ten years or however long that may be, and therefore let's have a debate on that. Please, you know, at least take one minute. Congress has been out of power for seven years. The DMK has been out of power for ten years. So, if you can show us your progress report, we will be happy to engage on a discussion. Now, our only concern is because you do not have a good track record with regard to women's issues. That's why you are appropriating imagery, and our problem is. you stop there you do you it is it is hollow right. symbolism you cannot go beyond that there is no substantive right. policy needed. right Man- manu sir po- point well taken in terms of what you were just trying to put forth about uh, you know the symbolism pers- part of this entire thing but i'm afraid we're completely out of time i i like to thank all my panelists here and uh, wishing all of you the very best for the upcoming elections uh, but the question here is with regard to uh, the voter because it is the voter who ultimately decides and whether these sort of tactics this uh, you know Uh, imagery and this uh, association uh, part of it actually is going to work uh, is the voter going to be able to see through it and really look at what each party is actually offering that is what is important uh, to really understand and that is what we'll get the answers to once uh, the elections are done and the counting day uh, actually comes uh, comes in but on that note thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the urban debate